Hi everyone and welcome to Know Your Food with Wardy. I'm Wardy, a wife, mom of three, and the lead teacher and founder of traditionalcookingschool.com. I'm also the author of The Complete Idiot's Guide to Fermenting Foods. I'm so glad you're here. This is the podcast devoted to healthy family cooking with traditional methods like sourdough and old-fashioned pickling. These foods are delicious, easy, healthy, and your family will love them. If you haven't already, be sure to grab my free gift for you. It's five free traditional cooking videos from Inside Traditional Cooking School that will introduce you to my favorite fundamental techniques of traditional cooking. To start watching now, just go to knowyourfoodpodcast.com slash watch. And now let's get to today's episode. Hey everyone, welcome to Know Your Food with Wardy. This is episode 152. You can find the show notes, links, and more at knowyourfoodpodcast.com slash 152. I'm so glad you're here. If you're here with me on the live lab with my guest, Magdalena, welcome to you. This is going to be a great, great show. Um, Pre-show, I told you some of the things we could do, but here's a quick recap. You can click the hands in the bottom of each of our... um, each of our faces to give applause. So if you like something we're saying or you just appreciate what's going on, please be liberal with the clapping, we love it. In the right-hand column of the blab, you can share your comments. And if you add a slash Q, it'll turn it into a question that Magdalena and I will address at the end or during if it's pertinent. And this blab is being recorded and will be released as a podcast on iTunes uh, this Friday, March 11th. So, It'll be up here for you to refer to, or if you're listening, then welcome to you. And if you want to see the video recording, all you have to do is go to knowyourfoodpodcast.com slash 152, and you could see the video switch from audio to video. We'll also have the show notes there for you. So welcome. This is going to be great. I want to say a special hello to my guest, Magdalena. Hello. Hey. It's great to be here. <laughs> it's great to have you here. I just want to tell everybody that a couple weeks ago, Magdalena and I met in person and we visited and connected and it was wonderful. And when I learned that she was had such an amazing story about recovering from serious hormone disorders, um, I knew that I needed to introduce her to all of you because uh, one of the things that comes up over and over again at traditional cooking school with many of the women and moms and families are hormone disorders. It's rampant and it's 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 wonderful to be a part of a community with all of you who are um, attuned to these issues and open to talking about it. And I love Magdalena's approach because she works on balancing hormones with food and we all love real food and good food. So this is gonna be so enlightening. Uh, Magdalena, let's start out by you sharing your story. Um, if you could tell us, um, you know, how life was before and the things you've recovered from and kind of how that went. I know that everybody here would love uh, to learn a little bit more about you in terms of this hormone balancing. Sure. Yeah. So, you know, um, the whole started, the whole thing started with me probably in 2008 when I was officially diagnosed with Hashimoto's disease. Um, and, um, and then after that it became, uh, I had adrenal fatigue, uh, so very, very high cortisol levels because of my crazy job with advertising. Um, and then, and then it became estrogen dominance a few years later with a severe hair loss, which interestingly wasn't because of the thyroid, it was because of estrogen. And, you know, and I know we like to tell our stories from the time we were diagnosed, right? Because that's like, it's official, we know it, but the truth is that, when I look back at things, you know, it took probably many, many years to come to the point, especially developing a, a serious autoimmune disease like Hashimoto's. Um, you know, it's, um, I mean, Hashimoto's disease is, is an autoimmune disease for those of you who are maybe new to this, um, where the immune system starts attacking on thyroid. And because of that attack, the thyroid slows down and it becomes uh, hypo- hypoactive or, you know, underactive. Um, and, you know, and everything, and I know you teach that kind of stuff is the th- things that we shouldn't be doing, right? As, even as parents to our kids. But, you know, I was, the, I, I was the perfect case for developing an autoimmune disease, if you may. Um, I was, I was um, not breastfed, right, as a baby. I was a formula baby. I, was, I ended up in a hospital already in the first month of my life uh, with a whole dose of antibiotics, right, which changes your microflora for life. Right. My mom obviously had no idea about that. And, you know, what do you do, right, when you have a child with pneumonia in the first month? 
Um, so, you know, subsequently, right after that, always been ridden by a lot of eczema, um, horrendous ear infections that later in my teenage years became, uh, they were actually food sensitivities, which I had no idea about. My mom had no idea about, you know, and the, growing up on a Western diet where you live with dairy and gluten and, um, you know, it's an eggs. And, and funny enough, actually, I have a sensitivity to all three of them. <laughs> so, you know, you're literally eating uh, food okay. that you are not tolerating very, very well. And, and that ca has caused all these problems that I was having as a child. But then later it became severe acne and it became um, horrendous PMSs. I mean, I had such terrible PMSs just to give you perspective as yeah, I would not go to school or to work on that day. I would have to stay in. Um, you know, so it's, um, and then later, you know, and then later it became Hashimoto's disease and, and it just, it's like this vicious cycle. What I, what I do realize today was that it was, you know, it was just the years of abuse unknowingly on my own body of really, um, taxing my immune system, um, through the gut. So very unhealthy digestive system, always took a lot of antibiotics. I had chronic UTI, urinary tract infections mm -hmm. and candida problems and, um, and uh, sinus infections and ear infections. So what does a doctor do when you have those infections, right? They put you on more antibiotics. And, you know, so I think it's the years of just doing these things. Um, again, you know, I look at it from today from a perspective of a lot of, with a lot of forgiveness, because in some ways you, you might say, uh, how stupid is that, right? Of, of doing that to yourself, did, did you know better? But no, I didn't, you know, and a lot of people don't. Um, so, you know, that's where, that's where it was. Uh, eight years ago, I made a huge change. I got out of my job in advertising. I set up my practice, um, became, became a trained in nutrition. And, um, you know, and, and ever since then, I'm, I'm living today in, um, in total remission from Hashimoto's disease, uh, which my doctor told me that was coincidental. <laughs> <laughs> that did not you know better. Well. <laughs> was that? You know better. It's yeah. not a coincidence. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, my adrenals are in perfect shape and um, and I don't have estrogen dominance anymore. So it's, you know, it took a lot of work, but that's exactly I what I teach today is, is how to hack that so somebody doesn't take eight years to figure it all out, um, you know, and, and manage your life much better and have a much better quality of life. Mm-hmm. Wow, that is an amazing story. I love seeing transformations like that. So one of the key things that you teach is seed rotation. Mm -hmm. So I'd love for you to explain that to us. What is seed rotation? Who can use it? What does it do for us? Just tell us the power of seed rotation. Yeah, so, you know, seed rotation um, is basically the concept is to use um, certain seeds in the first part of the cycle. Actually, the, the concept applies for both perimenopausal, menopausal, and women who are still circulating, uh, sorry, uh, uh, who are still <laughs> menstruating, menstruating, right? Mm -hmm. So this is actually a universal concept that applies to any woman. I work only with women, so I'll, I'll just talk about that. Um, this this is not going to work for men very that much. Um, and what it is is basically if you're still menstruating, then it's a concept of the first part of the cycle, which is basically from day one, which is the first day of your period, um, say to day, 20, uh, to day 14. If you have a 28-day cycle, then it's day 14. From, one, from day one to day 14, you really want to help to boost your estrogen levels. And, um, and in the second part of the cycle, then we, we want to optimize our progesterone production to um, to prepare you know, ourselves for either for pregnancy or for just or, or for not, uh, not getting pregnant, but just getting our uh, period in a healthy way. And, um, and so the way we can do this, which is really quite incredible, is by using seeds. And so it goes back to the usage of real food, which I know you like to work with so much, right? For sure. So the first part of the cycle, what we do is in order to boost estrogen levels, you use flax seed and pumpkin seeds and preferably in a ground form. Um, one tablespoon of each is, is really great. Um, and then, then you switch over to sesame seeds and uh, sunflower seeds in the se second part of the cycle. Because of the vitamin E and the content of zinc that they contain, they will help with progesterone production. 
Um, and you know, and for women who are perimenopausal and you like your cycle is all over the place, you can pretty much start it from any day you want. Um, and women who are menopausal actually it really helps with hot flashes. So women who are menopausal typically tend to have low estrogen levels. And in order to boost your estrogen levels, especially the good estrogen, then you can start off any day of the month you want and just do it again, like the 14 days and 14 day rotation. Okay, that's great. I wanna tell everyone who's listening that uh, Magdalena actually has a visual of this seed rotation. So if you go to the show notes, knowyourfoodpodcast.com slash 152, which will be live on Friday, uh, March 11th. I will have that graphic there for you so you can see uh, the seed rotation cycle. It's very, very enlightening and it's visual with the different seeds. Um, Magdalena, can I just ask, should somebody be doing seed rotation if they have a hormonal problem or issue? Or is this something that any woman can do menstruating, perimenopause, menopause? Yeah. So it's a great question. You know, um, like with a lot of things in life, um, you know, whether it's with any superfood, I mean, like eggs are wonderful, but then there are some people who are allergic to eggs, right? And they have, or they have, a, or they have a food sensitivity to eggs, like the way I do, for example. Um, it's 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 a great question because always precaution is 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 important. Um, so if you are having digestive problems so much so that you can't tolerate flaxseed, um, then definitely that's, this method is not recommended. Or if you, for example, try it for the first three, four days, and instead of feeling better or having you know, more energy and having better bowel movement and just feeling more energetic, which typically happens with a lot of women, if you're having the opposite reaction or if right. you're having worse PMS, you start having developing breast, tender breasts, then it's a sign that actually you're not utilizing um, the flaxseed as, 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 as you should. And I, what I see is maybe one out of 10 women tend to get the opposite reaction to this food. And it's the same thing I see this actually with a lot of other foods, including like, you know, maca or Brussels sprouts, like people, um, you know, a lot of people respond so well to that. But there's always that one person in 10 that's going to have the opposite reaction than what we were expecting. So it's very important to honor your body and, and, uh, and listen to it and say, you know what, it's maybe not for me. Right. That's really good advice. I think it, it goes without saying, but I, I'm so glad we said it because what works for one person may not work for everyone. So I love that Magdalena has that experience to say one in 10 may have the adverse, um, adverse effect. And if that's you, pay attention to it. And like Magdalena said, honor your body. Very, very important. So moving on a bit, Magdalena, uh, you are also very interested in digestion as it relates to hormonal health. So can you talk to us about that connection? Yeah. So, you know, it's um, one, one real premise of my practice is not just to look at, I have this hormonal, this hormonal problem and I'm going to be doing this particular food. Right. So it's like, you know, this question of like, if I have a thyroid problem, what do I do? What foods should I be consuming? Right. For, and it's, and I think we, you know, we've been trained to think of it this way, right? I have hot flashes. I do black cohosh or I do maca or whatever. And for some women that works, um, for other women, it works for a while and then it stops working. Mm -hmm. Well, so what I have discovered already, you know, in my practice is that when we step back and, and govern and really recover and, and rebalance, three really important body systems in, in us, um, including digestion. So those three body systems is digestion, your uh, sugar levels, and your liver health. Those three body systems, when they're well taken care of, and there's a lot of good TLC that goes into that, amazing things are happening. And, and then we don't need to rely on the black cohoshes or you know chasing for progesterone creams or dosing up on our thyroid medication things start falling into place. And so I'm glad you asked about digestion. To me, digestion is like the first found foundation of good hormonal health. Think of it the same way, like if you wanna build a house on a hill that's steep and you don't have good foundation in place, it's gonna be a very shaky home. And the same thing happens with the hormones. So why is it so important? Um, a lot of things. Anybody who's got chronic digestive issues going on, that puts a strain on, on your adrenals. So you're talking about developing adrenal exhaustion just from having digestive issues. And I know you spend a lot of time on gut restoration, right? I want to just emphasize that feeling bloated, constipated, having gas, acid reflux, um, you know, pain in the tummy, right? Pain in the digestive system. 
it's all signs of very compromised and struggling digestion. They're never okay. So many people are having so many of those issues that we assume it's okay. It, it's not. Right. Um, and, and every time you do have those chronic digestive problems, you are basically inducing yourself, you're giving yourself a cortisol shot, right? Which leads to, which can lead to adrenal exhaustion. That's number one. Number two, there's actually a lot of other reasons. I'm just going to talk about two because this is a, a fairly short right. podcast. The second one that is, is, it's something that most doctors don't even realize today. So there's something in our gut, in our small intestine called the estrobolum. And the estrobolum is a subset of bacteria of our microflora in the gut, right? That specifically metabolizes estrogens, right? So who would have thought, I mean, there is all this research, if you just Google estrobolum, there is all this research that's now coming out um, that shows that women who have been having estrogen related problems, such as breast cancer, thyroid cancers, ovarian cancers, um, problems with the uterus, endometriosis, any form of estrogen dominance in general, terrible PMSs, they are all related to poor estrogen metabolism, um, have also had digestive issues mm-hmm. and specifically having problems with poor bacterial flora. So I know you are huge on fermentation. Um, so am I, right? And that's like, that's the principle, that's like a first step, a stepping stone into, into good hormonal health. So. What I just want to emphasize once again, like before we dive into, you know, before you jump off and say, I'm going to take this supplement or that supplement, I'm going to do this herb, blah, blah, blah. always start off with when you're having hormonal imbalance, always start off with your digestion and you'll be amazed how many of those hormonal symptoms actually start going away when you repair your gut. Love it. I think it's so true. I mean, it's not, it's not just a cliche that we say all the time, but our health begins in the gut. And so you ha- we have all these diseases and all these symptoms. And so many of them, like you said, fall into place. The positive, like, you know, helping yeah. them. It all, our health falls into place when we focus on the true root cause, which is the health of our gut. It's highly yeah. related to digestion and hormones and everything that's so, you know, all these rampant illnesses in our society. Yeah. So that's fantastic information. And you have something that you're sipping on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Show it off. So for our podcast listeners, if you'd like to see what Magdalena is drinking, you need to go to knowyourfoodpodcast.com slash 152. And she has a beautiful tall glass. It looks like a, I don't know what kind of glass it is, but I imagine an ice cream sundae in it. <laughs> it has a beautiful green juice in it. So Tell us what you're drinking. Yeah, so, you know, I'm drinking something that's really hugely supportive towards the liver. Okay. uh, Because the liver plays an incredibly important role in hormonal rebalancing. And we can talk about that in a second. So in that juice, I drink it daily. I don't I don't like to do juices in the morning because I feel like it's too light for me. Like I need something more grounding and sustaining first thing in the morning. But I like this as a sort of a midday drink. And so in this particular one today, I, um, you know, I do some, I started off with some dandelion leaves um, because dandelion is hugely beneficial for, um, for the, for the liver. Um, I also did put some ginger, which is one of my favorites. I did put some parsley in because parsley also has, is not only huge in vitamin C, but also it also supports the liver. And, um, you know, and, and as I juiced it, then I put it through, I put it in a blender, I put it in my Vitamix just to give it a little bit of a spin. And I put in flax seeds because I tried to find ways to incorporate those two tablespoons of flax seed in my own life every day. And I did put some broccoli sprouts in it. And broccoli sprouts are amazing. Did you know that there is all this research that's now coming up? If you go to PubMed.com, which is all the medical research papers are published, this, this research paper is now showing that broccoli sprouts can do the same thing for you as what tamoxifen will do. And tamoxifen is a, is a drug that women with thyroid, sorry, with breast cancer are put on. It's an estrogen blocker. And they were now discovering by consuming um, bro- 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 broccoli, sorry, broccoli sprouts, uh, we, we can get the same effect as from tamoxifen without the, the side effects that tamoxifen creates for a woman it's amazing Amazing. stuff you know and it's just with um so you're talking about the 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 specific dose they are are looking at is um is a cup of of these little sprouts every day uncooked in a raw form isn't that amazing it is amazing as powerful 
as medicine, but none of the side effects. Yeah. So what is the liver connection? Can you talk about that? Sure. So, you know, it's, um, this was really fascinating when I started doing this work was, um, on myself when I was, when I discovered to have estrogen dominance, I was like, this is really peculiar. You know, um, I've been in such good health. Like I've reversed my autoimmune disease and all of that good stuff. And why am I suddenly having these hair just shedding? And, um, I was having a lot of fatigue started coming back and PMS started coming back. And what I realized by doing this work, really diving deep, is that I, I had so much stuff sitting in my liver for, for over the years that never really was taken care of. So interestingly, there's, there's, there are different pathways in the liver that take care of different toxins. And, um, and different, and, but they also, these different pathways, like the salvation pathway, methylation pathway in the liver, they're also responsible for elimination of mutated hormones. So what it means is that when a hormone is produced in a gland, right, they get into a bloodstream, then they deliver it to specific cells all over your body to do its works, right? So like, you know, mm -hmm. thyroid hormone, you get beautiful hair, you got nice skin, right? You don't age too quickly. Um, you are able to have your metabolism ramped up so you don't put on too much weight, right? Progesterone does its own thing. Estrogen does its own thing, right? But then when they, when they do the job, they get back into the bloodstream. And it has to be something that that filters them out, right? And we, we excrete our metabolized, that means the used up hormones, we poop them out. And what's fascinating is that that filtration happens in the liver. So when our liver is really stressed out, the, the body doesn't focus so much on the hormones, it focuses more on the more life-threatening toxins, such as heavy metals, such as viruses. Right. That's what gets ruled. But that's what liver takes care of, because we need to, that's what our life depends on. You can live with, you know, um, with with hormonal problems. We can survive. It's not a very good quality of life, but we can survive. So you need to have a pretty well optimized liver in order to be hormonally balanced. And mm -hmm. specifically for estrogen, for example, the methylation pathways plays an important role. So incorporating all the cruciferous vegetables, right? Like, um, you know, the cruciferous will be like your broccoli, Brussels sprouts, uh, broccoli sprouts, right? Um, you know, kale, um, right? Collard greens. Having two servings of those are really going to be helpful with optimizing um, liver health. I want to just say one more thing here because we take it very uh, liberally, especially in the United States, removing women's gallbladder. You know, it's almost mm -hmm. like as if it was this useless organ that had no function whatsoever. And and I can tell you one thing, and, and I'm sure I'm curious for those of you who ever um, had your gallbladder removed, if we can just maybe hear from you, if that's sure. one of if, if sure. anybody had their gallbladder removed. What I see in my community is that a lot of times um, we don't realize this, but when I ask that question and people say I had it removed, a lot of women see that when they had the gallbladder removed about six months later to a year later, this is when the hormonal problems are beginning to really develop. And most of us don't, don't connect those two points together. But the thing is so interesting is that um, the gallbladder's job is also to, to produce amongst other things is to produce bile. And it's the bile that kind of pushes things through in the liver and, uh, and it's hugely responsible for flushing out those, those hormones. And so, it's if somebody had their gallbladder removed and has a lot of hormonal problems, you need to take care of that as well, with, whether it's with bile salts or just really, really keeping your, uh, your liver really clean and your diet really clean. Very good. Good information. So in the comments, Stacy and Stacy is saying hers was removed at 21 years old. Mm -hmm. And Kiffin in New Zealand, or maybe I shouldn't assume that NZ stands for New Zealand. It could be your last name, Kiffin, <laughs> says, I have gallstones right now. Michelle says, yes, my gallbladder was moved in 1999, have had digestive problems like acid reflux since. I also was going through perimenopause at the same time. Yeah. Wow. That's huge. Yeah, yeah. I know. We can't assume we have these organs. And I mean, the appendix is another. We have these, our tonsils. I mean, they're just liberally removed and we don't really know the impact of that. So I feel the same way about pulling teeth. Like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to remove something if I don't absolutely have to. 
Yeah. You know, we need to trust that it's there for a purpose and that even if we don't understand what it's doing in our body yet, that there's a God given role to, you know, our overall health by what, you know, all these things that are in our body. And Marty, can I answer one question that came in? It's a really good yes, question. Yes, please do. Cruciferous vegetables, even for people with active uh, hypo, uh, Hashimoto's. So that's a question that comes up over and over um, with thyroid community. And I'm glad you asked that, savoring, savoring KY. Um, so first and foremost, if you go to PubMed uh, and look for cruciferous vegetables uh, or brassica family of vegetables and thyroid conditions, you're not going to find a single study, just so that you know. And um, so this is something that a lot of some bloggers started off with that list and that copy paste other bloggers uh, without fact checking started sending that around. Now, having said that, what I have seen uh, before is that People who juice a lot of cruciferous vegetables, like, you know, they go on this health bench and they and they juice a, a bunch of kale every day, um, raw, that I have seen people developing thyroid problems. And whether, I am not sure, and, and I've spoken to a number of different thyroid experts, including like Dr. Karazian or Isabella Wentz, who are like the authority in thyroid space, um, you know, they, they both say they would not recommend raw vegetables. It's not for sure. We don't know whether it's causing that thyroid problem or whether if they are so high in oxalates and oxalates are these little crystals that yes. can deposit themselves in the thyroid gland. Either way, you know, moderation is key. And if you do have a thyroid problem, then you want to go slow on raw cruciferous vegetables. But if you have Hashimoto's disease, they don't forget you actually do not have a thyroid condition. You have an autoimmune disease, which means that it's your health and so it's your gut and your overall detoxification system is not functioning properly right now it's not so much the thyroid is a problem it's your gut that is a problem here that's a great distinction to make and would when you're talking about moderation and raw are you referring to sprouts as well or would they be in a different category and not be like full-grown raw broccoli yeah, you know, um, I don't know about you, but I mean, I wouldn't eat more than a cup a day of of, um, of sprouts. Um, would I recommend more than that? I mean, if somebody feels good on them, yeah, sure. Um, but like doing, I don't know, like four cups a day, unless somebody's going through, I mean, I have heard about, you know, I don't work with cancer patients per se. I know that people who do cancer treatments will go on very, very high doses of raw vegetables, but that's totally not my space. So I can't comment on that. <laughs> But I think for general other uh, things, I would not do more than a cup a day of sprouts. Okay, great. So you have something coming up that I know everybody's going to want to hear about. Mm -hmm. um, it's a free online workshop on March 12th, which is Saturday. Mm -hmm. So hopefully you guys are all listening to this now or by Friday on iTunes so you can take advantage. So a uh, link for you, everybody, that I'm going to post in the chat so you can get signed up for it. Um, is tradcookschool.com slash free balance. And Magdalena, take it away and tell us what this free class or this free workshop is. Yeah, so I want to invite you, um, you know, if you're here and this, this topic is close to your heart, um, think about joining us on Saturday. I want to invite you to a free workshop that I have called Cooking for Balance. And um, the topic is how to use food to rebalance your hormones. So we're going to be going much deeper into what we talked about today. Uh, in a much, much deeper level, we're going to cover gut, we're going to cover sugar levels, we're going to cover the, the function of the liver, and specifically what foods to incorporate. Um, I'm also going to set, set a set of context of like how different symptoms will be connected to different hormonal imbalances that we really do not expect a lot of times. Um, you know, so if you don't know what hormonal problem you have, don't worry about it, just come to the workshop and you you will learn uh, more about that. So the workshop is uh, it's an hour and a half. It's on Saturday at 10 o'clock um, in the morning Pacific time. So it is 1, 1 p.m. Eastern. And it's um, I'm going to I'm going to teach as much as I can within an hour and a half. It's going to be pretty intense. There is a replay so people can take notes because, you know, there's going to be so much of information I really want to give and action points to give. Um, but there's only so much that I can do. So it is going to be after that. There's a continuity program. Um, that goes on for four weeks to really dive deep um, into, you know, hands in, feet first and um, <laughs> head first into the program and uh, and do that. But, you know, you don't have to do that. I think the workshop itself is going to just teach you so much stuff. You can just take it away um, and run with it, um, 
you know, and for some people want to go deeper, then you can join us for the fuller program. Fantastic. I love that you're making that free resource available. I mean, you're giving us a taste and Saturday you're going to give more practical help and then somebody else to go further can dive even further. So I really appreciate you're making this available for us, Magdalena. Thank I you. I love to swear show. Just so that you know, we have already 20, as of just, I just told you, we've got 22,000 people registered for the workshop and we have 4,000 oh. seats available for the life one on Saturday. So, because the system, I just, the system has its limitation. I can't, I can't do anything about it. So make sure when you sign up, log in early, because otherwise you're not going to get a live seat. We're going to have, have a replay for a few more days after that, but I think it's always fun to do it live, right? Sure. Sure. Yeah, that's great. So everybody, hopefully you caught that. The link to sign up for the free class on Saturday is tradcookschool.com slash free balance. So that's on uh, Saturday, March 12th, 10 a.m. Pacific. Magdalena can only have 4,000 people live and there's already 22,000 people signed up. Uh, tells you what a need there is for this. Yeah. So log in early so you can get one of the 4,000 seats. If you haven't got one, don't stress. You could probably keep trying in case people drop off. But the other thing is for a few days, Magdalena will make a replay available. So make sure to watch your email, use a correct email address, you know, type that in when you sign up. So you make sure you get Magdalena's emails back and take advantage of the replay. I think it's going to be fantastic. So Magdalena, thank you so much. And let's look at the questions now. Um, oh, absolutely. I mean, gold stones. Yeah, because when you have gold stones, what happens is you are not, your bile is not flowing as easily um, as it could be, right, through the bile ducts into the liver. So can this lead to uh, hormonal problems? Absolutely. I wouldn't say specifically to adrenal exhaustion. Adrenals are more to do with stress, whether it's stress coming from mm -hmm. heavy toxic load, stress from digestive issues, stress from emotional, physical, chemical exposures, so many different levels of stress. Right. Um, so yeah, and, and one more thing, just want to say about this, a good question about the gallstones is that um, a lot of women develop gallstones when they have a dairy sensitivity. So something to look into as well. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. There is also another, see, I see my primary doctor just raised my levothyroxine amount, but I'm wondering how much is related to hormones too. So Robin Wright is saying that. So um, Robin, when it comes to, so levothyroxine, she's raised it is because you know, obviously your thyroid is not producing um, enough of T4 or you're not converting the T4 hormone to T3. So levothyroxine is actually the synthetic version of T4. That's originally what your thyroid should be producing. So it's two issues. It's either there's something bothering your thyroid that you're not producing enough of T4. That could be because if you have Hashimoto's and the immune system is attacking your thyroid and that's why you're not producing that hormone. Or when the conversion is not happening from T4 to T3, is because you have your gut needs some TLC or your liver is not particularly functioning very well. Uh, those are the two main reasons. And T3 hormone is that's what powers you up. That's what gives you beautiful hair. Um, you know, you don't age too quickly. It gives you healthy weight, energy, clarity of mind, all of that good stuff. So there needs to be, I think, a little bit more understanding. But those, you know, if you need more of that medication, is typically because of one of two, those two reasons. Great. So Margaret is asking, what if you're on birth control? Yeah. Hard question. <laughs> Controversial question because, um, look, in all honesty, I, I just be a straight shooter. It's not good, okay? It's Please. synthetic hormones. Um, most women struggle with it. It creates a significant impact on, I mean, there's just so many things. It, it impairs your B12 uptake. Um, it, you know, it, it creates a lot of, effect on your liver um birth control pills are just generally mineral muggers they deplete you in zinc uh, selenium um vitamin d i believe as well it is and so there's just so many side effects to it but having said that is depending on your lifestyle is so hard to get away i mean you know to find a substitute so i totally get that you know look at the natural fertility method um there's there's different um that you know like my a lot of my women in my community use something called lady comp uh lady c-o-m-p where with your body temperature you use your finger me measure your body temperature it creates a pattern it tells you when are you when are you ovulating so those are some alternatives there but if you are having hormonal problems i definitely would recommend as a longer term plan to get off them great so we are going to take one more question and then wrap up here. And I'm picking this question because Angelica 
and oh, it just skipped. KB series asked it. I have polycystic ovaries. What would be the best way to go to level out my hormones? Okay, so PCOS, uh, polycystic ovaries, happen most of the time when we have high testosterone levels and problems with sugar. So, you know, mm -hmm. really the, the core problem with women with PCOS is sugar metabolism. Many women with PCOS have insulin resistance or hypoglycemia or hyperglycemia. So you're going to take care of your sugar levels. Um, that's the bottom line. I'm going to be teaching that on Saturday a little bit more, a little bit deeper. But what's interesting is that when your sugar levels are up, whether it's um, glucose or insulin, that will bring down what's called the um, uh, uh, sex hormone binding globulin. And sex hormone binding globulin is the what binds sex hormones, right? And testosterone is the most aggressive sex hormone that we have. So you're not binding sufficient testosterone. So you, you tend to have a lot of testosterone. That excessive testosterone produces, can lead to production of over, um, ovarian syndrome, polycystic ovarian syndrome. So sugar is the core um, of, of that condition and totally reversal right away. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much, Magdalena. Well, we can't get to all your questions um, in this amount of time, I want to honor Magdalene's time because she's taking her time out of a busy day to visit with us. So I know that she's going to go deeper into a lot of things we just barely touched on on her free class on Saturday. So I am going to paste that link again in the chat for you. It's crowdcookschool.com slash free balance. Um, so go there to sign up. The class is on Saturday, March 12th at 10 a.m. Pacific. Once again, it's going to be packed, so get there early. And if you aren't able to get in, she is going to make a replay available. So make sure to watch for those emails. And all this information is going to be up at the show notes at knowyourfoodpodcast.com slash 152 on Friday, March 11th, including the graphic of the seed rotation that we talked about near the top of the hour. It's going to be very, very interesting and informative for all of you to just Go back to and reference and even drag and save to your computer because it's an image file that you can save for reference. Magdalena, do you have anything else you want to add before we close here? Yeah, you know, um, I just want to say that there is incredible amount of work that we can do to help ourselves to feel hormonally balanced. And, and if, if you're ever catching yourself saying, oh, I've always been tired. I've always been having weak hair. I've always been this or that. Oh, my mom has it, so I have it, right? I've always been, you know, I never slept well in my whole life. It doesn't matter. It doesn't mean it has to be like that forever. Mm -hmm. And there's incredible things you can do with food that's custom to hormonal, specific hormonal imbalances that you can help yourself without having to rely on excessive amount of supplements. I think we are totally over supplemented as a nation. Everybody is popping a pill and most people do not have the best results on it. So I just want to tell you that food can, like once you understand what goes on in your body and what to focus on, there's an incredible sense of um, hope that can be brought and just improving your quality of life to do things you never thought you could. Magdalena, I love that. I love, we're ending on such a positive note. You've given us hope that even if we say I've always been that way, if it's not ideal, have hope that it doesn't have to continue that way. And that through food, real food, nutritious food, targeted food, um, that you can reverse that. Thank you so much for that wonderful message. Wow. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate your time giving us your knowledge. It's been very wonderful. So everybody, your assignment is tradcookschool.com slash free balance to take advantage of Magdalena's uh, free class on Saturday. Thanks, everyone. God bless you. See you later. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you'll come back again soon. Here's what you can do next. You can visit the show notes for this episode to get links and more resources about today's topic. Just visit knowyourfoodpodcast.com slash, and then without a space, type in the number of today's episode. You can stop by knowyourfoodpodcast.com slash watch to get five free traditional cooking videos from me. It's a gift. And finally, you can subscribe to this podcast on iTunes, the podcast app, or Stitcher. If you're on a mobile device, just search for Know Your Food with Warty right in the app. If you're on a desktop or laptop, just go to knowyourfoodpodcast.com slash iTunes right in your browser. And while you're there, please leave a rating or review. I love to get your comments, and your feedback makes it much more likely that others who are interested in traditional cooking will find my podcast too. Thanks so much. God bless you, and I'll see you again soon.